Joy is like a flame dancing in a draught. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the joy we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the joy you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word and to do your will by sharing your joy with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still which tells us what Caesar decided to do. He gathered together the soldiers of Rome and made a decree to send people home. Now one man called Joseph, this man was a gem, he needed to travel to Bethlehem. He went his, who, with his wife, who was gentle and mild, 
but heavily laden as she was with child. Though terrible timing, they had to end the to travel to Bethlehem both together. I will rewind a bit as they're walking to town. I'll tell of the day when an angel came down and mentioned to Mary, an unmarried lady, that she was expecting God's very own baby. Of course she was worried, as you could expect. Let's face it, her marriage plans could have been wrecked. But thankfully Joseph was spoken to too. So instead of creating a hullaboo, he stood by young Mary, knowing that she'd been chosen by God. She was special indeed. Mary and Joseph had reached his homeland, and Mary was worried, expecting that soon the baby would come and they'd be marooned. So quickly her husband attempted to find a place they could rest so she'd have peace of mind. So Joseph knocked on the first door he found. It opened a jar and a head popped around. The innkeeper listened while Joseph said, Do you have a room and a lovely warm bed? Sorry, but no, you have to go. So Joseph and Mary walked down the street, looking so tired they were dragging their feet. They stopped at the next inn and knocked on the door, and Joseph repeated what he'd asked before. Do you have a room and a lovely warm bed? We're absolutely full, you have to go. Bye bye. The innkeeper stood there and calmly said. So off went poor Mary and Joseph again and knocked on another door down the lane. The innkeeper heard them and came to the door and Joseph repeated what he'd asked before. Do you have a room in the lovely warm bed? Please sir, please sir, you must have something. The innkeeper thought then pointed and said. I suppose you could sleep in the cattle shed. So Mary and Joseph walked over that way and finally settled to rest in the hay. And just in time too, for the very next morn, an amazing thing happened. Yes, Jesus was born. So, holding him closely and safe in her hands, she wrapped him up warmly in swaddling bands, then laid him to sleep in a manger bed where usually all of the animals fed. Now up in the hills one fabulous night, some shepherds looked up and saw a bright light. And one of them said, as he looked to the skies, The light is blinding me, look away. <laughs> the shepherds were frightened. What could it be? No one could tell. It was too bright to see. They huddled together like frightened lambs and shielded their eyes with shaking hands. Then up in the sky, way overhead, all of a sudden, an angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring news of great joy. Your Saviour's been born as a baby boy. You'll find him in Bethlehem, laid in a bed, made of a trough in a stable shed. The shepherds were dazzled and glued to the spot, when all of a sudden, you'd never guess what. A whole host of angels gathered around, making a beautiful praising sound. Glory to God and peace to all men, Christ the Lord, born in Bethlehem. They danced and they dwelled with such beauty and grace. The vision of loveliness filled the place. They held hands and circled around to the right. It was beautiful, heavenly sight. The angels were beautifully blissful to hear but gradually, one at a time, they disappeared. The shepherds were calmer now, no longer frightened, just really excited and feeling enlightened. Then one of them turned to the others and spoke. Can this be for real? It's not just a joke. Were they really angels? Did they really say that God's son was in Bethlehem, in some hay? After recovering from such a shock, the shepherds decided to leave their flock and travel to where the angel had said the Son of God would be laid in his bed. So off they all went with a baby lamb as a gift for the Saviour, the Son of Man. I wonder why God sent the angel to us. You'd think his own son deserved more fuss. We're not really special. Why tell us the news? A little while later, a really bright star led wise men to follow it 
traveling far, they'd read in the scriptures that Jesus would come and knew that this beautiful star was the one. Look at that star overhead, it's leading us to a child who has come to be the Messiah of everyone. The kings who had learned in their dream that horrible Herod was not what he seemed, so shaking their heads, they didn't look back, but looked at the star to get them on track. It led them to Bethlehem. So finally up in the starlit sky, the star from the east came to rest way up high, leading the wise men to where Jesus lay, the place where he slept in, a manger of hay. We bring gold, frankincense and myrrh. We worship you. So that's how the story of Christmas began, when God came to earth as the saviour of man. We celebrate Christmas and all do our part, but does it affect how we feel in our heart? Do we acknowledge what God did for us, or do we get lost in the Christmas buzz? For God sent his only son for our saviour. Good morning and welcome to our Nativity and Chris Dingle. I'm really glad you are able to join with us this morning. It's tough now that we're in tier three, but let's take this as an opportunity to show God's love through our actions in keeping everyone as safe as we possibly can. I'd like to thank Junior Church for that amazing Nativity. It just goes to show that where there is a will, there is a safe way. Huge respect to the junior church team for putting all of that together. And it's also so lovely to be able to share with the lighting of the Advent candle. And I would love to remember and say thank you to those who are working tirelessly behind the scenes to bring all of this online so that we can all share in the joy of Christmas together. So as we come together this morning, from wherever you're watching, I'd like you to ponder this question. What does Jesus want to say to you this Christmas? It's been said that if you take Christ out of Christian, all you're left with is Ian. Now, I have a very good friend called Ian who is lovely and kind and generous However, even though he certainly makes life better for those around him, I don't think he will actually be able to save the entire world. What if we apply the same thing to Christmas? As Christians, what would it be like if we took Christ out of Christmas? Perhaps it might feel a bit like uh, someone's birthday party um, that we would go to without ever even greeting the birthday girl or boy. We would spend the whole time there eating all of their food and talking to all of their friends, but never actually saying hello to them or even acknowledging them. Although the trimmings around Christmas are wonderful, I mean, who doesn't like a beautiful Christmas tree? It can be tempting to just focus on those extra bits. The delicious dinner, the quality time with family, the games, the laughter. All good stuff, obviously. I want to suggest and share something that I feel deep in my heart, that everyone, our church family, which includes those at home, those who have been able to come on a Sunday morning, those who have joined in with Messy Church, and all of those people that are using our community centre, everyone touched by our church, 
we all need the Christ behind Christmas, the person of Jesus, the light of God. And not just for the festive or traditional Christmas that Christians have adopted and which has grown up around it. We all need to know that our God is with us and he wants to have a relationship with us. And if we know that, if we know that he loves us and wants to have a relationship with us, I think that means that we have a role to play this year. Let's show everyone that they too have a chance to meet and have a relationship with the one we celebrate at this time of year. So here's your challenge. Be a hilltop Christian. We all know about the angels appearing to the shepherds and how the shepherds just had to go and tell everyone about it. Your challenge then is to be like the shepherds. Tell someone that God loves them and wants to have a relationship with them. That sounds easy enough. Just go up and tell someone God loves you. But sometimes it's a bit tricky to start that conversation. So let's think about how our Christingle can help us with that. Listen to Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So how can we use our Christingle to spread God's love? In chapters 7, 5 to 7, of his gospel, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew brings together some of the most memorable words of Jesus. His teachings were full of everyday images which people could relate to and which helped them work out how they too could put his message of love for God and others into practice. Jesus is talking with his disciples about what it means to follow him. And he uses two simple images, salt, that is used for seasoning and a lamp put on a stand. And so he shows the disciples the effect that their lives ought to have on all of those around them. Let me explain what I mean. We as Christians are there to help show someone in every encounter we have with them what God has made in them, to bring out their flavour, their best potential, and to shine a spotlight on God in every situation. We need to take time to really see that person with our kindness, with our generosity, our love. We can help others discover what God has given to each of us. And yet Jesus's words to the disciples and to us also warn that is it is all too easy to lose our usefulness to others and to God if we too get distracted or forget to pass on a taste of God's love and the hope of God's light. God has invested so much in us and amazingly has chosen us to be used to transform the lives of the lonely and the lost and the vulnerable and the poor, both locally and globally. At Christmas, we remind ourselves how Jesus is the life that came into the world as a light for all people. That light should now be shining through us, among our neighbours and in our communities. Now more than ever, as we enter tier three, Jesus challenges us not to be ashamed of God's light. It should lead us to seek the good in others, which in turn will highlight how great God is. So how do we start to tell someone that God loves them, that he wants to have a relationship with them? Well, why not show, start by showing them your Christingle and explaining what it means? So the orange represents the world and the red ribbon or the tape 
it re represents um, the blood of Christ, the love of God. And the sweets and the four sticks, they represent the seasons, God's amazing creation. And the candle in the middle represents Jesus's light in the world, bringing hope to people living in darkness. Now here's where your challenge comes in, how we can show others God's light, his love for them. You see, a candle can't light itself. It has to receive light. And in the same way, each one of us needs to receive the light of Jesus for ourselves. The problem is that this light will eventually burn down if we do nothing more than light this one candle. The light of the candle needs to be passed on. Jesus wants his light to be passed on in the same way. Now, do you like my lovely candle? So these are all the things that I had at home just lying around. And I think it's making a pretty good Chris Tingle this year. Can you notice that when I shared my light, my candle light, my light, it didn't lose any of its brightness. Instead, the brightness has grown between the two candles that are now lit. When we pass on God's light, we don't lose it. And that is what is so special about the light of Jesus. We need to go on sharing the light again and again and again. The more we give away the light, the more light there is. God sent Jesus not just for a one-off visit, but rather God planned by the Holy Spirit to pass on his light to each and every one of us in every place. Jesus is interested in much more than a Christmas Chris Dingle light burning away on its own and just lighting up a small corner. It's the whole house the whole world that needs to be filled with light. This is why Jesus was born into this world as a light to overcome the darkness on our behalf. And although perhaps it goes against our natural instincts, Jesus does want us to be hilltop Christians, just like a town built on a hill, not huddled away. Let's help bring out someone's God-given potential. You see, the light of a Christingle candle can go on forever if we become the candles. So think about where you will keep your Christingle candle so it can be a daily reminder of Jesus's challenge to pass on the light of his love. Maybe it could be lit during breakfast or the evening meal. Jesus is the light of the world. And it's a light that he wants to give away to us so that we can be lights for other people. So what does Jesus want to say to you this Christmas? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the light of the world and that you have passed on that light to us through your cross and resurrection. Thank you, Jesus, that your light is stronger than darkness and you have passed on that power of that light to bring us your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that your light is shining through the work of so many wonderful organisations, bringing hope and happiness to adults and children and young people in these dark times. Thank you, Jesus, that as we pass on your light in the care we give to others, your light never dies but continues to give light to the whole world. In this Advent season, may your light shine brighter and brighter as we celebrate your light in us and through us for your glory. We are the light of Christ for the world. Let us be his candles. Amen. Light.
of the world, you stepped down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, all so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for our sake became poor. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether.